Hello everyone, I've got here a really interesting record player. Um, it's a Philips FP146 um, and it's clearly a child of the 80s. You can see that in the design. Um, it's looking quite funky, <laughs> I think. Um, why is it interesting? Well, because it's a linear tracking turntable, see? So the tone arm doesn't pivot like it would on a classical or a traditional record player. No, it tracks linearly along the record. And that makes it quite interesting. Um, in theory, obviously, that um, should give you a better sound quality because your needle um, will always be completely straight in the groove no matter where you are on the record. In a normal turntable um, you adjust the, the arm in such a way that the needle is perfectly centered in the groove in the middle of the record but then if you go more to the inside or the outside obviously you will have a bit of deviation and your needle will have a slight angle compared to the groove of the record. Um, so that this is avoided in a system like this. So in theory it should sound better. In practice, however, I don't think yeah, you will hear any difference, especially since this is not a high-end device. Um, it's very plasticky. Um, it'll sound good, don't get me wrong, but it's not the, let's say, such a high-end device that um, a system like this will make a difference, um, especially since this really complicates the mechanics of um, this thing and the electronics as well. Yeah, the complete end-to-end -end chain is a bit, a lot more complicated and much more things that can go wrong. Um, but I think it's really nice. I, it, looks, it looks really cool and having a linear tracking turntable is always a bit of a gimmick. Um, it's, yeah, it's just a fun thing to look at. Um, now, cosmetically, it's in okay condition. Um, it can use a bit of a clean here. There are some, some tape residue here on the front. Um, you have some scratches and dents, normal wears and, uh, yeah, normal wear of normal usage. Um, the problem is that it has some issues. Um, the operability is really intermittent. Um, it does some weird things sometimes when you play a record then the, and the needle comes more or less halfway in the record it just skips towards the end i've also had issues that i couldn't get the arm back into the starting position or that it just stops playing so um yeah we're gonna need to have a look um at it um wait i can show you actually how it works and Maybe we can spot some of the issues on the, uh, yeah. Um, we can reproduce maybe some of them now. Like I said, they are in intermittent, so I don't know if I will be able to catch them on video here. So it's really simple. The operation, you just turn it on. You select here 33 or this is 45. So 33 in this case, you press play and that's it. So that works pretty well. Um, let me just turn on the volume here a bit. Yeah. Now, um, the thing is, if you want to skip forward on the record, you can just do this, move forward, and then play from where you want. Now, um, see, that's working perfectly fine. Now, however, sometimes when I move to the right, it doesn't want to move to the right anymore. If I move all the way to the right, yeah, it stops. That's how it should work. But um, normally I should also be able to stop it. Yeah, voila. That also doesn't work all the time. So let me just try if I can reproduce an issue here. So if I go all the way to there, press play, Yeah, now it's working fine. Let me just 
play a bit with it and see if I can reduce some of, uh, reproduce some of the problems. I don't know if it should auto stop, but I don't think it should. See, now <laughs> I've been playing with it now for ten minutes and it doesn't seem to do anything wrong but I have had a lot of issues with it in the past so I think it's a matter of dirty switch contacts here or dirty sensors um, there are lots of sensors inside that detect the position of the tone arm and the speed of the record and these kind of things so I guess it might be that so yeah what are we going to do with this the problem always with non reproductive reproducible issues is that you don't have a way to test if they are have been fixed so i'm gonna open this thing up and see if the switches need cleaning and we're gonna see if some capacitors need changing and then see if we there are some maybe sensors that need cleaning i don't know um, so far it seems actually to work pretty well even though earlier today when i tried it it had a lot of issues um, so to me that seems like there is an issue with the switching or with some capacitors. Um, yeah, so let me um, open this thing up and then we'll see how it looks inside. Okay, um, first thing I'll do is remove the cartridge here, the needle, um, just and put it aside somewhere so that we don't damage it by accident. Um, I'm also gonna take off the platter. Okay. And then I guess we can also just take the cover off, right? No? Yes? Okay. Well, yep, voila. So let's put those things aside that we don't damage them. Now these screws on the top here, um, they are adjustment screws, I think, for the hinges. So taking these off doesn't matter. I mean, they just loosen the hinge. So um, yeah, you don't, um, don't... Taking these apart doesn't help you disassemble the whole thing. Um, there are screws here in the bottom that we need to remove. See, we have one, two, three, Four, let me just take these four screws out and I'll get back to you. Okay, I think we are loose. Um, does the, Yeah, it lifts off. Well, the bottom lifts off. Let's see if there is something stuck. No, it's just the cover plate on the bottom that lifts off. Yeah. Let's get that already out of the way. And here we have the bottom of the turntable um let me see how i can fix this in a position that i can work on it and i don't damage the tone arm i think it's best to put these down um how do i turn this around without having it rest on the tone arm See, um, all the electronics, they are, or most of the electronics are located here beneath this cover sheet. Um, and um, here are also, I see, yeah, there is the tone arm, I see a PCB there, a PCB here, here are the switches. I'm just gonna put something underneath here for the moment that I don't rest on the tone arm. Um, like this mm, ice cream um, and maybe first thing I'm gonna do is clean the switches over here or take out this PCB um, and then we will see what we can do to these switches yeah so I've undo this undone the screws and the front panel should normally just clip out. You have like two clips here, on one on each side. And I think it should just clip out. Yeah, see? 
Ah, oh, it's still stuck here in the middle somewhere. Ah, there it is. Okay. And now I guess this also comes out. Yay, there we are. All right. Okay, so um, these switches over here, they are just normal um, non-latching push buttons and uh, they honestly, they look okay. If I uh, test the continuity, they are almost dead on zero ohms or dot one or dot two ohms. So they look to be working fine. But this guy over here, that's the switch uh, to switch between 33 and 45 RPM. Um, and at the same time, it also switches between, um, yeah, the position of the needle, uh, the, yeah, the position of the tone arm. So if you put it to 33, obviously the tone arm starts at the edge for a 12 inch record. If you put it on 35, it assumes you have a single on there. So, um, it goes much farther down, uh, the record, uh, to start playing a 45 RPM single. Um, this is a, a sliding switch. So you, it has six contacts. So it's two switches on each side and they slide up or down depending on the position. Now let me show you what this one measures. So this normally the switch should nor now close here in this position between these two pins. 170 ohms, no that's not the correct I think. 30 ohms and then the other between the other two contacts open. Yeah, and here on this side, between these two contacts, also open, and these two dot three ohms. So this one is fine, this side, but this side here, see it's measuring 20 ohms. See, and if I wiggle with it, it it's all over the place. Now it's 40 ohms. So I think this switch is bad or needs to be cleaned. Um, let me take it out and see if we can do something about that. Okay, um, I desoldered the switch and let's see if we can open it up. Uh, I think it should be relatively straightforward to open it up. I think you can just go underneath here like this underneath and on both sides obviously yeah and the cover pops off oh don't see that you don't lose the spring there is another spring in there okay all right okay see so i yeah i'm not checking the camera here i don't know if this was in, <laughs> in shot but oh I'm, I'm losing the contacts here of the switch so see you have two contacts here that one just fell out Oh, wait. And um, here you also have two contacts. I'm simply going to clean these and then assemble the switch back together and um, see if it makes a difference. Okay, um, so the switch contacts have been cleaned, um, washed and um, lubricated. Well, yeah, uh, I applied some um, lubrication and, and uh, oxidation protection, especially for sliding contacts. And see what we get now. Um, this is the first contact. It probably sh should be pushed in the other way. Uh, that's perfect. That's that doesn't get any better than this. The other one. Also dot one, perfect. Now the other side of the switch. Dot one as well. And the second contact on this side. Also dot one, perfect. This 
Switch performs like new. Uh, now let me put it back in the PCB. Okay, so the switch is mounted back on the PCB. The PCB is back into the cabinet. Um, and so far this uh, is very serviceable, this record player. I like it. But um, yeah, let's touch wood that it stays like this. Um, see, it's this guy. Um, just for reference, I've got the schematic over here and the switch that we cleaned is this one. You can see uh, it says switch between 17 centimeters, 45 uh, RPM and 30 centimeters, 33 RPM. This board over here is the, the keypad board, so the one that we took out. Um, and then there are other uh, boards in there as well. And I'm just now going to focus on this guy. Um, that's the power supply board. See, because there we have the on off switch. Um, maybe we should take that one out and clean it as well. That's this PCB over here. Um, there's also a filter capacitor on there, which I would like to check. So um, next step is trying to get this PCB out. Now, the cool thing is these screws here, they all have the similar, the same, they are not all the same, but they have the same head. Um, they are um, a T10 safety bit, but also, um, yeah, you can also use a flat screwdriver to um, tighten or untighten them. So that's cool. And I think this PCB is only held in with one, with this single screw. Yeah, and then obviously also the keycap, which maybe we should take it out first. I don't know. Yeah, I think it needs to come out first. Yeah. That's the keycap. All right. Ah, that's a more traditional style switch. Um, this capacitor over here, let's quickly check it. So it's a 1500 microfarad, 25 volt. No, almost uh, yeah, 0 0.2 ohms ESR. That's really good. I'm gonna leave it. That's fine. Um, so. This is a quite simple PCB. You have four diodes for the rectification, a fuse, um, your capacitor for smoothing, and then I guess a voltage regulator. Yeah, and an on off switch here. Um, let me just measure the contacts here and see if I, if that they make good contact and if we also need to clean those. 60K, that's not possible. No, okay, this is the closed contact dot one dot zero. That's really good. And on this side, also dot one. And if I push it a switch, dot two. And on this side, dot one, that's fine. So no, nothing has to be done on this PCB. So I'm simply going to put it back, I guess. Okay, so now I guess the idea is to remove the entire uh, platter assembly as the main PCB is bolted to the assembly and it's only connected to the chassis uh, in a couple of places. I think, with, is it true? Only two screws? I think so. There's one over here. with a washer and there's one over here and does that yep <laughs> it's only these two screws that's weird ah uh, yeah the tone arm as well. Okay. And now I think I can slide it out like this. Because the 
stone arm needs to come out as well, and I... No, that's not gonna work. Let me think about this for a minute. Okay, so this is a connector over here that simply plugs off. Um, and it's the red cable which is closest to me here, so this one can go. And we have a bit more moving space now, and now I think I should be able to twist it like this, yeah, or not. This is really difficult with the tone arm here being in the way. Um, okay, I think we first need to take off this black headpiece, and I think there are four screws holding this in place. One, two on each side. So this is one. See, this is two. Or no, this one here. No. Let me see. Yeah, it's over there. And I think that needs to come off because otherwise the, the tone arm won't uh, come through the, the hole. And there are also two here on this side. So now I think, yeah, see, now this comes off. Whoa! <laughs> okay, um, I should have done this first, I guess. Okay, so this is a bit less serviceable. Shit. I think I'm just temporarily going to uh, screw this um, the platter assembly back in place because um, otherwise it'll fall out when I turn it over. Just a, this. Okay, now let's see if we can take it off more easy. Here, see this is pinched in there, so I think we need to yeah, lift this over. And then I think we should be able to take this cover off. Yes, it comes off, great. Okay, I'm also going to put this aside. See, now we have the tone arm free, and now we can take the uh, platter mechanism off entirely. Just make sure that I don't rest the tone arm on anything. So I'm taking my ice cream box again. And then we need to remove these guys again. Yeah, it, I think it's okay still. You just need to know in which order you need to take it apart. But that's with any device the case. And it, as we removed the needle, obviously before it, you don't run a lot of risk. And there we have it. Okay, um, so this is the main board. Um, what is interesting here is I notice a bit of corrosion here in this area. I don't know where this is coming from. I also don't know if it's an issue, but it see it looks like it's slightly corroded here. Um, now, if I look at a diagram of the board, that's 
this area over here and there is an electrolytic capacitor on the other side. So could that be leaking? Um, there some, are some other electrolytics as well. So you have one over here. There is one over there. Um, so it might be a good idea to check it out on the other side. Now, um, the thing is, how, I'm gonna, how am I going to remove this PCB? Um, see, there are two screws here. Here is one. There is one. Um, but these cables and wires, there are lots of wires everywhere. I don't know if I will simply be able to remove the PCB without um, desoldering these wires. But let's give it a go anyway. Okay, so these are again uh, these torque screws, but again a size smaller. Uh, okay. Mm. There is another one. And there is a third one here in the corner. Okay. PCB is definitely loose, but are we going to be able to flip it over? Oh, shit. I heard something spring loose. How the hell am I going to get to the other side of this without desoldering these wires? I don't think I can. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um, let's give this cable a bit more slack. All right. Honestly, I don't see much wrong here. Ah, wait. This guy is... Uh, shots yeah oh it's uh, completely out of image here let me just adjust the camera see that that guy over there is completely shot this one i can see the crud leaking out on the bottom and that's uh, this side of the um Oxidation that I see over here. So um, that one needs to go. And while we are in here, we'll replace the other caps as well. So I have one over here, two over here, and then another one here all the way on the edge uh, here. So we'll replace those as well. Um, so I'm going to recap this board, change these one, two, three, four, five capacitors, and I'll be back. See, um, so this is the one that came out. It's so shot, so corroded that the leg is almost falling off. If I test it, then uh, it's a 10 microfarad. Yeah, now it reads open circuit uh, because the leg has just fallen off. But uh, it read 3 microfarad and ESR of more than 40 ohms. So yeah, that one is kaput. Okay, so this is interesting. See, we have two uh, 3.3 microfarad caps, I believe. I think they are both 3.3. Uh, yeah. Uh, in parallel. Um, and on the schematic, in this place, there is just a single 3.3 microfarad. So I think um, they afterwards realized that maybe one was not enough. So they put the second one in parallel, even though it's not on the circuit. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing here. Also replace it by two 3.3s uh, in parallel. Okay, um, the full recap of the board has been done. Um, maybe it's a, a nice occasion to explain a bit how the mechanism is working. So that if you are encountering also some issues with this, then you at least now know how to start and how it should work. Okay, so imagine you're playing a record. Um, so the record is spinning along and you have the needle sitting in the groove. 
And that means that the needle is just following along the groove. And as a result of that, it's being pulled in towards the um, center of the record uh, because it's sitting in the, in the groove. And that one is, yeah, it's moving along slowly towards the center. And that means that your tone arm at a certain point will form an angle, right? will start forming an angle when the record is playing. Now, over here, um, on this small PCB, you have at one side an LED and on the other side you have a phototransistor, um, which is detecting the amount of light being passed through here. And if the tone arm is straight, then this light path is blocked by this um, yeah, piece of plastic here that is in between the LED and the transistor. So when the tone arm is then pulled towards the center, more and more light will fall on the uh, phototransistor. And when a certain threshold is passed, the um, motor will pull the tone arm a bit uh, inwards so that it's straight again. And that's how it follows the, the record. So it will basically shuffle along all the way. It doesn't follow continuously. It just twists. And then when it reaches a certain threshold, the, tone, the motor pulls the tone arm further along towards the center. And it basically, yeah, it goes like this. Uh, <laughs> And then here on this PCB, um, you also have uh, a couple of phototransistors. Uh, let me show you. Uh, see over there, you have on this side, I think you have the LEDs. And on that side, you have the sensors. And um, those sit, uh, or the light is blocked or uh, let through uh, via this wheel over here. Um, and that basically... Um, yeah, then can determines the position of the tone arm. So it knows how many rotations this wheel has made. Um, so it knows where the tone arm is uh, positioned more or less. And um, that means that this is basically counting uh, the position of the tone arm. So if you have any issues with the positioning, then maybe it's this circuit. If you have issues with the tone arm not following correctly or passing uh, yeah, when it shouldn't, then maybe it's that circuit. So um, that's how this record player is working. It's quite nifty, I think. Um, it's a nice uh, example of Philips over-engineering over to solve an issue or solve a problem that wasn't really there in uh, turntable design. But hey, they used phototransistors, these to track the position, uh, these to make sure that the tone arm is staying in uh, more or less in line with the groove. And these here, to uh, determine the position, uh, how far it is along the, the record or how close it is to the center. And obviously then if you want to play a 45 RPM record, then using this mechanism here, the turntable can also position the arm on the start of the 45 RPM single. Now the question is obviously, how am I going to test if it now works properly without putting everything back together? I'll have to think a bit about that. I don't know yet. Because you do have some adjustment points over here. See, there are two uh, potentiometers over here and they are marked with 45 and 33. So they uh, mark the uh, speed of 45 and 33 RPM. Um, and then there is another potentiometer 3670, that's this one. So that is available through the PCB on that side. That marks the starting position of the, the record. So that means that this here with this you can adjust um, the yeah the, the starting position of an of a 12 inch of a 33 RPM record. So this is basically the calibration for the uh, the positioning. So I, those were fine before I touched it. I think I haven't tried the speed. Well, um, my worries seem to be a bit uh, unfounded because um, yeah, it's perfectly doable to test the record player like this. I just have it set up on the bench and it's working like this. It's plugged in. And now you can clearly see the mechanism over here. Here you see the, the LEDs and on this side you have the sensors and here it's the same, but that you won't see on camera. And I can just use it like this. See, it's working. And here you can, okay, now you can move it to the left and the right. It's working as it should. And here you can clearly see how this wheel is spinning in front of the LED. And yeah, that way 
the uh, microprocessor inside is counting the number of turns and that's how it knows where the position is of the tone arm. Now if I press play, the tone arm goes down and then it just slides all the way to the to the center and I think that's because there is no uh, cartridge connected and it doesn't get any signal whatsoever. Um, I think we're gonna need to test this with the needle and the cartridge inside and then uh, see if everything is working fine. But as you see, see this should you this is working. See the mechanism to start and stop the the tone arm. See that's working. Okay. Um, to check the speed, it's quite easy. You just take a cup or something and you put your cell phone on top with an uh, RPM counter app like this and you press play um, and let's just voila and then you see it's running slightly fast but now I'm on the dim bulb limiter and I'm exactly at 220 volts so what I'm gonna do is plug it into the mains directly without the dim bulb limiter in between and then see if that changes something. Could be that it's get the, it'll get even faster. So let me just do that for a second. Okay, now it's directly into the mains. And okay, it's the same. So it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, 34 RPM. So we are slightly fast and it might make a bit of sense to adjust it. And 33 RPM is this potentiometer over here. I have to... <laughs> oh, okay. My cell phone is just not hitting my screwdriver. Um, let's see if we can adjust it. That's better. That's almost perfect, actually. Nice. Uh, now the 45. That's also fast. That's the other potentiometer. Okay, there we have it, 45 RPM. Um, now I could go ahead and measure the wall and flutter as well. Just give me a second here. Okay, start. Let's leave it running for a bit. Okay, let's stop the record player again. And we got um, 45 RPM plus dot two percent or three percent that's really good um the wow is um dot 23 percent um that's not fantastic but hey um i don't think i can do much about that only maybe the belt but the belt has been changed recently um uh, maybe cleaning the motor or something but okay um, let's do the same measurement on 33. Um, start. Minus uh, 33 and a third. Okay, minus 6.6%. 6 Maybe I need to speed it up a bit. It's indeed 33 and a third and not 33. Um, plus or minus 30%. Let me just speed it up again a bit.
Okay, I think that's better. Start. All right, that's really good, I think. Thirty three dot three dot zero six percent off, and we have a wow of dot twenty seven percent. So that's the same as on the forty five RPM. Okay, so I think everything is working. I'm just gonna assemble everything back together, put the platter on top, and then we can maybe do another uh, wow uh, meter, see if it improves. I don't think it will. Um, I think it is the motor. Um, but, or it's also the an error on the, on the app. Could also be that there is a, yeah, what is the error reading of, of such an app? I don't know. Anyway, I don't think I can do a lot with uh, in, in relation to WoW because um, yeah, there is only the belt, the turntable itself, and the motor, so not much that I can do about that. So let me just put everything back together and see if the uh, turntable is now working as it should. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, everything is put back together, um, and I hooked up the record player to the Hitachi amp that I just restored on the channel earlier and um, I still have it in the workshop here so yeah let's test it with that one and um, now it is quite noisy see but I think it's picking up some interference either from the amp or it's the cable I don't know if I bundle up the cable together then it's rather silent so I guess it's the cable not being um, uh, the best quality um, okay, so let's see if we can find a record here. And um, uh, I don't know if this is copyrighted. I don't think it is um, because, um, yeah, um, <laughs> I have a couple of these funny um, old Dutch uh, records. Well, Dutch, I, I don't know. Are they Dutch or are they Belgian? I don't know. I think Dutch. But in any case, it's... Uh, in Dutch, wow, lots of scratches on this one. Um, but in the 70s, I guess, there was this, um, like this edgy type of records were quite popular. And so you have like um, Dutch songs with some, let's say, naughty lyrics, naughty for the time. Um, so this one, the mate from the Straat is Dutch for the girl from the street, so I guess you understand uh, what it's about. So I don't think this will be copyrighted, you, you'll never know. If it is copyrighted, then now you won't hear anything because I'll, yeah, I'll cut it out of a video afterwards. Um, let's see. Um, it's set to 33, play. Wow, that's very scratched. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how, yeah, I don't think this is a good test for the sound quality, <laughs> but um, at least we can test the functionality of the record player. See, I can now pause it or move it forward to the left, back to the right, press play. Again, play. Man, this record is extremely scratched. I mean, and normally it should also stop by itself if you uh, reach the end. I think I need to go a bit further. So it should automatically stop. Yep, it does. 
perfect. And then it goes all the way to the start. And the record should stop. And it does. That's, is the other side? A, yeah, it's also very scratched. Oh. Jesus, this is bad. Yeah, um, let me see if I can. I should be. Well, let me see if I can find a better record than this. So this is a uh, liedjes met een knipoog, uh, which means songs with a wink. So again, some uh, songs with some naughty lyrics or funny lyrics. And I think this one should be a bit better. I mean, in terms of um, sound quality, not in terms of song quality, because the songs will still be pretty bad. And I was wrong. Or not. Yeah. If you know Dutch, then... Uh... Okay, let's take something else. Ah! Okay, so this, <laughs> this might be my my go-to record for testing on the channel if uh, if it doesn't flag any copyrights. Okay, so next test, let's try an... Uh, wow. Okay, let's try a 45 RPM single. Well, I might choose the one with the coolest looking guy on the front. No idea what this is and where I get these, I have no clue. Um, I'm not sure, I, I guess this will be copyrighted, but um, let's take 45 RPM and then it should normally... Start in the correct position. Ha! Amazing! It works! Yeah. Um, again, not the best song according to me, but... Um, it sounds good. Okay, uh, now you might ask yourself, how do you play a 12 inch um, 45 RPM record on this? Let me show you. So this is a 12 inch 45 RPM maxi. Um, this will be copyrighted, I guess, so I won't be able to play it for long. So what you do is you set it to 33, you press play, and then you switch to 45. It's as simple as that. Similarly, we walk the same line. Just a five and full swing. Okay, so that's that. Um, and I guess that's also it for this video um, about this nice, interesting record player. Um, so I'd like to thank you for watching. And um, yeah, this was a one-off video. Um, next video is probably going to be radio related again. So if you want to see that, um, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed. And um, then I'll see you next time. So thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.